Pour tous les Congolais, vous que Anna Mongo est réunir le district Ebeli. Le tété la Bazawana, le Mongo, le Bazawana, le Ekonda, le Bazawana, le Chua, le Bazawana, le Kolo est tellement Ebeli. Tout ça, la province est à Kassé Oriental. Au place de la tété la Bazalara, les autres comme la province de Nabiso, il y a Sankourou. Tout ça, la province est à Maniema. Côté de la Bazali, tout ça, on est à l'équateur. Pour nous, on a dit que quand on parle de Anna Mongo, il y a un école de mon côté. Il y a un école de mon côté. Il y a un ministère de Simba Bokoku. Il y a un exploitant pour le business. Il y a un business. Il y a un business. Il y a un business. Parce que Bakoko koko na ba bunda. Ba koko na ba liami ndele ya rotumba. Mingi ba lobaka ete ba nkumo ba zali ba ndo. Si on lobi kwenye. Kwa on parle ke, ba tete la ba zara ba ndo ki. Mingi ba lobaka ete ba nkumo ba zali ba ndo. Si on lobi kwenye. Oui, to la ba ndo ki te. Ki ndo ki ya solo solo bote ya ngo sima. Oui, to la ba ndo ki te. Soko me ki to go leo ba to zuyo to kati yo, to lambi yo na njungu to liye yo. Biso to zala ki ki ndo ki na biso ya ko bate la mabele. Ki ndo ki ya solo solo bote ya ngo sima. Il y a un balo, je vous ai dit que je suis un balo, je suis un balo, je suis un balo, je suis un balo, je suis un balo. This video has not been created to offend any person or ethnic group, especially those we know today as Batetela. No unfavorable presented facts should be perceived as an attack on what we know today as Batetela. And for those new to this channel, may find it useful to know I am so called Tetela myself. The messaging within this part 10 is designed on the basis incentivized African globalist from church backgrounds, UN backgrounds, university cults and intelligent organizations alike may intend to replicate or vary this part 10. With this being said, if you are in search of honesty in relation to history within DR Congo, be critical to the fact in this phase of globalization, there is a desire from some African elites supported by Europeans technical supports to supplant documented commentary about specific ethnic groups onto other ethnic groups to remove specificity and formulate false stories in order to support the idea of absorbing or usurping another group's documented story, history or even identity. This is currently being engineered online by compromised people with black faces. Where an agent online is reliant upon oral commentary, it will be useful without interference to self cross check the available history and status of the person or group who is relying on oral commentary so you can effectively measure and verify the validity of the oral commentary which can actually be speaking about a completely different group's custom or story and in some cases it is simply misinformation. Equally, if you discover material reliant upon so-called scientific or historical commentary which is formulating theories and conjecture presented as a fact because scientists or historians said so, it will be useful to check the available history and status of the person or group who is encouraging you to engage in the selected scientific or historical commentary. Again, you should effectively measure and verify the validity and status of the person, group and the scientific commentary, which can sometimes be coincidentally synchronizing with globalization goals, which intends to merge socially and morally incompatible populations in order for the so-called elites to data manage populations more easily at the expense of more indigenous people's birthright and original family names. Now starting part 10. For those who watch parts 1 to 9 may notice the term savage and cannibals in Kasai was almost synonymous with the category Batetila applicable to those who lacked the late 19th century perception of prestige and were psychologically incapable of embracing invading Europeans innovations as easy as other groups. The earliest invading Europeans arrived just after the mid 19th century where they documented to have encountered cannibals across a land known as Maniema which formed the foundation of Batetila cannibals. The reports of cannibalism in Maniema 
amplified following reports of Sultan Swahili Arabs losing numbers after their slave raids because it was rumoured some of them were chopped up and killed and eaten by the indigenous populations they wanted to enslave. It is useful to note it would appear invading Europeans were usually present during some of these slave raids. Tipu Tip's men and those working for him and Kasongo Lushi were also documented as cannibals who cannibalized people during their slave raids. This is perhaps on the basis their captives were also the presented cannibals of Manyema stationed in a place known as Ototera during that time and they were collectively nicknamed Watetera by the Sultan Swahili Arabs. The term Watetera solidified into Batetela after the Congo conference around 1885 and it became accompanied by the phrase Batetela cannibals which first emerged from the reports of cannibalism in Manyema. In the late 19th century it was generally understood many so-called Batetela were against the invading Europeans who attempted various methods to civilize them and in some cases the invading Europeans openly conspired to wage war in order to traverse through Gonda speaking territory. It is likely this phenomenon caused the invading Europeans to further amplify the presentation of Batetela cannibals, especially during and after the period of the Congo Arab War where most of the Konda speaking people were placed on rubber plantations under rulership of the Zanzibari auxiliaries who learned local languages. This included leaders from the Manyema Ututera who collectively joined forces with the invading Europeans. As a result of oppression, revolts occurred from 1895, lasting up to around the early 20th century. These revolts were commonly phrased as Batetela revolts, supporting the understanding it was mainly the Kunda speaking populations who were revolting, which only elevated the savage stereotype on the so called Batetela. Also in the early 20th century is when the first major study on the so-called Batetela was conducted, notably from a British museum agent who played a large role in finalising the construction of the Batetela category, which is now unconsciously accepted as an ethnicity. The British museum agent ventured throughout today's Sankoro district where he encountered other related groups who he noted as having engaged in cannibalism just like the early European invaders who travelled to Manyema. In this case the British Museum agents placed emphasis on the enslaved amongst the community being eaten as a practice throughout the Sankoro district combined with a 19th century report of Manyema cannibals the term Batetela cannibals would eventually encompass all of the Kasai's Konda speaking populations known as Batetela throughout Kasai to Manyema. So, if I were to ask myself, were these so called Batetela cannibals? I would politically agree and say yes. On the basis, the experts affirming these cannibalistic accounts maintain their same historical energy surrounding the cannibal savage phenomenon. Rather than what is noted as Batetela cannibals, my political affirmation is more so built on the sharp fact nearly all original indigenous populations across the planet were presented as cannibals. Furthermore, the Gonda speaking populations referenced as Batwa inhabited the region with the so called Tetela forest populations and these same Batwa just like the Tetela were documented cannibals which does not favour later presentations of a harmless homogeneous Congo pygmy race. As many may know, invading Europeans had since constructed a mainstream scientific and anthropological presentations insinuating a short statured race referred to as pygmies were the first inhabitants within the whole of DR Congo which includes Kasai. 
it is practical to summarize the presented psychosis of the first indigenous inhabitants across the planet was associated with cannibal savages. When invading Europeans encountered indigenous populations around the world, a sequence of events usually followed, which are in summary the indigenous populations being classified as a cannibalistic race, followed by an initiated public propaganda campaign to justify an invasion or pacification or murder of the indigenous population. Do note one of the main tools used to achieve this was the Bible by assigning biblical statuses and sometimes biblical lineages to groups where the acceptance of these biblical lineages concurrently runs with the acceptance that the God of the Bible approved of usurping or pacifying entire nations who were usually heathens and pagans but more notably first inhabitants of a land such as Canaanites or firstborn such as Esau who are all subject to usurpation, murder and pacification. Retaliation to such doctrines would be framed as a characteristic of a heathen. Their explanation to murder an indigenous population is sometimes on the grounds they are saving one population from another whom they miraculously end up bearing children with and these offsprings could actually be aiding the invaders rulership centuries later and their phenotype and genotype may not be consistent with the majority of the original population. These sequence of events later lead to a phenomenon where their experts create their perceived truth where they make it appear compatible with their history anthropology and genetic theories which leads to medical research presented as an attempt to save the dying populations. The psychosis of indigenous populations within forest environments would be shaped by the harsh biodiversity including poisonous creatures and predators such as leopards which should logically cause an unfamiliar population to flee such harsh environments but this is not the case amongst the presented cannibalistic groups. All what I have explained is my political affirmation of Batetela being cannibals, so I will also provide the balance by presenting information which challenges what I have politically affirmed. Again, the mid 19th century Manyema region is the foundation for the presented Batetela cannibals, which was yet to be applied to all Gunda speaking populations within today's Sankoro district. This is mentioned because the term Batetela was also used to describe some Baluba Songhe groups in the 19th century. For those who watch parts 5 and 6 sharply may understand a Baluba group which later became known as Songhe included an Arabized group known as Nsapu Nsapu who raided other Baluba Songhe in southeast Kasai and then ended up in West Kasai after the non arabized Songhe in South East Kasai had driven them out. The group is mentioned because their documented activities strangely paralleled with bad publicity presented as Bate Dila. For instance, this Baluba Songhe group were also presented as cannibals and slave raiders who were potentially responsible for some documented 19th century atrocities presented as Bate Dila. Consider this group was once located on the east of Congo where they were notably part of the Arabized group allied with Angolan and Portuguese traders who frequently travelled along the trade routes which are showed in part 7. Earlier I made a strong statement insinuating Europeans presence in slave raids. Understanding this Baluba Songhe group also allied with the invading Europeans we should also understand it was this grouping who carried out atrocities on behalf of the Arabs then later carried out the invading Europeans dirty work. The presentation of Batetela or Batetela cannibals seem to have overpowered many historical experts attention from these documented Baluba Songhe incidents. For instance, it was initially understood by invading Europeans that those who filed their teeth were the cannibals. However, one Baluba group with filed teeth 
were not documented as cannibals but a Badidila group who did not file their teeth were documented as cannibals. The question is were these Badidila cannibals actually today's Badidila or were these unfiled teeth Badidila accused of cannibalism? And which Baluba was encountered with filed teeth? For example, the British Museum agents refer to a Baluba Songhe chief as a Mutetela. It's important to note within this same report, he did not draw a distinction between the Baluba and Songhe, presumably on the grounds he saw Baluba and Songhe as the same people. Do note he saw the Basilanji as a separate people. Within another study, he was partially responsible for categorizing a mixed group of Baluba Songhe and Tetela as Batetela people. This group was known as Sungu, whose patrons were the Baluba Songhe, known as Mukanzi, whilst most of the subjects were so called Tetela. This dynamic was similar to that seen amongst other Baluba Songhe, known as Banyamutombo, Lumpungu and Nsapo Nsapo where the Europeans placed them in rulership within regions they were not originally from. In the early 20th century, invading Europeans were successful in presenting images of people they imprisoned with captions explaining they were imprisoned or sentenced for cannibalism. These presentations lose its strength on the grounds they failed to capture a single photo of cannibalism taking place. Consider whole regions were presented as cannibal regions and the rate of reported cannibalism should have resulted in obese populations, which was not the case. This last point I will make would be in reference to the northern Batetela where the first account of cannibalism was reported by the same British Museum agent who said the Maluba Songhe Lumpungu was a Tetela. There has been presentations demonstrating cannibalism can cause neurological related diseases. A case was presented for the indigenous populations of Papua New Guinea known as Foray people who were presented as having a neurological disease they called Kuru due to their custom of eating decaying corpse. On the basis the reports of cannibalism were so rampant across the Sankuho district, it is safe to suggest some form of cannibalistic related disease should have spread rampantly, but this was not the case. Though referenced as cannibals, the invading Europeans still insisted in stating the Batetela have an appearance of a splendid race, which suggests the Batetela cannibals were in good health, and that's if these people were actually today's Batetela. It's important to note, diseases reached the Sankoro district following the arrival of the Sultan Swahili Arabs and invading Europeans, which peaked when today's Sankoro district was occupied from around the year 1910. There are various other examples that can be brought forth to contradict the presentation of Batetela cannibals and hopefully this part can help build your understanding or conclusion. Whether all, some or none of the Batetela cannibal reports were true, we must pay attention to what motivated the reports because maintaining a memorable event within your memory can prevent a fact turning into a myth, whilst some presented facts can actually be found to be myths which have been memorized into a perceived fact. The outcome of these facts or myths can shape a population and even a whole country so far demonstrated within this Gasaya story. Stay tuned for part 11 entitled Gongo Lutet Ethnicity. Thanks for watching. I'm
Ilu. 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 Ilu.